Well, hi everybody, this is Diana Marcel. And in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about something called triangulation. And if you don't know that, what that is, you've probably experienced it a lot. It's when two friends won't talk to each other, but they talk via you, or they try to. Or maybe you've got a family member that uses you as the pipeline to send a message to somebody else. You know that feeling? That's triangulation. Hi everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal and I'm on the road again as you can see. And as some of you know, uh, I'm on my way down to be part of Juliana's birthday party. By the time I get this one up, it will already have been and gone and <laughs> and I will probably be sleeping off a sugar drag. But I had a request from a number of the broadcast viewers this week, uh, yesterday, when I was doing the broadcasts yesterday, uh, to actually talk a little bit about what I believe is technically called triangulation. And as I explained at the front end, this is where People won't talk to other people directly. They, they seem to think that you're going to be the messenger for them. Now, I know it drives a lot of people insane, but let's start by making sure that we check in with ourselves. Have you ever done it? I have. Uh, <laughs> so I want to make sure that I start off by saying, check the trees. Um, that I start off by saying it's really important to understand that we need to check in with ourselves and make sure that we're not doing this and what I hope to do is during this particular video is to tell you what it sounds like looks like feels like and then what we need to do and by the way what we need to do for ourselves as well to stop ourselves doing it and be a better friend to our friends and not expect them to send messages on our behalf. Now, I grew up in a dysfunctional family, I don't mind saying that, and had a lot of wonderful childhood memories, but <laughs> There was certainly quite a bit of dysfunction in it as well. So, this triangulation thing is something I grew up with, so therefore I thought it was normal. I didn't realize it was not the right thing to do. Because if that's what you grew up with, if that's what was normal in your household, then you understand why would you think that there's anything incorrect about it. So the first thing that I want to say on, on this part is that if you relate to any of this, um, the, the number one thing to do is to forgive yourself because if you didn't know, how can you, how can it be bad if you know what I mean? So now the main thing is hopefully by the time we finish doing this video, which will probably be in two videos, but by the time we've done this video, hopefully you will now be able to say, well, now I know, now I'm responsible. Make sense? So what I want to do is give you a couple of examples of where triangulation happened in my life. But first, I have to hit the duty free. <laughs> which is where I'm going right now. Well, that was exciting. <laughs> I wanted to get some more perfume and they ran out, which means I've got to get some on the way home or next trip. Luckily, at this time of the year, I come down a fair amount, so <laughs> I should be able to pick some up. Um, it's funny because my perfume I like to buy the I like to buy it the duty free because it's a little bit expensive um, the next thing was that I wanted to get a certain sort of beer for the household that I'm visiting 
no such beer ran out of that as well so I'm going hmm, nice <laughs> so I guess that the next thing was if you can't buy the beer that you want to get for your hosts then get one that you want so I did <laughs> and then of course I remember that they make really good coffee at the duty free here so I thought oh I'll just fill up my mug uh, forgot the mug so I had to invest in a new mug people I reckon this one pretty obvious that it's not belonging to anybody but me oh that's good coffee they do make good coffee there so I now have a new mug let's hope it works well and now let's get back to the reality. All right, we were discussing about triangulation. So I had a mother that was so good at this. Um, and that's why I'm saying that I never realized that it was a problem until somebody with a lot more knowledge told me about it when I was an adult. But my mother would, bless her heart, would very, very rarely deal with anything herself. You know, if she didn't want to go to somebody's party, she'd sort of go, um, I wonder if you could just do me a favor and just phone them and let them know I, I'm not well. Now, this was ridiculous because I knew she was perfectly well. She just didn't want to go, didn't want to be bothered. And it took me a long time to actually turn around and say to her, no, I'm not going to do that for you. And she was quite shocked because you know she trained me to do it all my life and I said the other thing is why would um, you use me to tell lies on your behalf that's not fair well what do you mean I said because it's not true that you're not well you're just fine and you just don't want to go so the triangulation comes when you are asked to pass a message on to a third person or if you're used as the go-between, which is really something that you probably all know about, which is you are friendly with two different people who have got an issue going on between them, and they don't talk to each other, they talk to you instead, in the hope that you will be the peacemaker or the make sense of it all. But they actually don't do it because they want to understand they, they, they do it because they want your you know they want the person doing it wants their point of view put forward to the other person in a way that benefits them <laughs> to be honest that's what it is now I've done that as well I don't know about the rest of you and I can think about it particularly in one instance where something happened and somebody's child did, did something that totally confused me. So I went to the mother and said, any idea why this went down the way that it did? And luckily the mother was smart enough to say, don't know, you may want to phone and find out. What? You may want to phone and find out why they did that. Well, I think that was my wake-up call. When I heard those words, I realized, you know something? I think she might have started with the words, I really can't talk on their behalf. You would need to speak to them. And I was a bit stunned to start with. And then I thought about it because I do that. You know, I sit and process it for a while and I went, that's a really good answer. I got to remember that one. <laughs> I really can't speak on their behalf. If you'd like the answer to that, you may want to phone them. Now, the interesting thing is, you also, when you say that to somebody, you're also sending a message that says, don't bother to try this again, because <laughs> I'm not going to answer it for you. Nor am I going to find out what the reason is. That's your job as an adult. And as I said, I was, I was pretty, pretty shocked at the time. 
But I cannot tell you how many times I've used that as an answer since then, when people have done the same to me. Any idea why so-and-so did so-and-so? No, but you may want to talk to them and find out. So <clears throat> that's the way you stop it. Well, you, you might don't necessarily stop them doing it because, you know, they may continue to do it with other people, but it does stop them doing it with you. If every time they ask you that sort of question, you come back with, you know, you don't have to say it nastily, just go, actually, it's a good question. You may want to phone them and find out. <laughs> yeah, I can understand you'd want the answer to that. Give them a call, see why. Most people haven't got the guts to do it. That's my experience. Most people would rather stay ignorant of the reality. So, now I heard a really nice thing with some of my viewers. Um, one of my viewers, Paul, was telling a story which I thought was really nice. And he was telling a story about how he's got one particular family member that people really have a problem with. And therefore, they, they don't necessarily want to interact with them or whatever. And so what Paul does is he actually encourages them to come and sit next to him. Because number one, they are part of the family, and number two, they deserve to be at the function, and number three, they deserve to have somebody interact with them. And so he takes it upon himself. I thought that's a real act of love, isn't it? I was very impressed with that. Now, does he win brownie points with the rest of the family? Probably not, but he certainly won brownie points with me for that, because I thought how incredibly good that is. Now I know a lot of my American viewers are about to go into Thanksgiving and then we're all going to go into Christmas and <laughs> you know these family dynamics you know inclined to really play out during this time of the year. So I thought that was really good. Very impressed. So here's the thing if you've got somebody who's triangulating you put a stop to it by holding them accountable. The other thing I found, by the way, and it's sort of in the same genre, it happens that the same sort of people will do this as well. The rumor mongers, people who spread rumors. The way to stop the people doing that to you is to say, who told you that? Oh no, I don't want to say. Well, if you don't want to say, then I don't want to hear it. Because if you don't want to say, then this is a rumor. This has, does not have good intent at its base. So leave me out of it. <laughs> now the one that really drives me insane is the lobbyist. Do you know what I mean by the lobbyist? The person who will lobby you to try and get you to agree with their way of thinking so that when this comes out in public they can use you as their backup person. Well, you know, Sal agreed with it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hate that and I hate it when somebody is having a conversation with me and then they say well you know you're wrong and I discussed it with my husband and he agrees with me well some of you will have heard me say this before but when they do that it's a train going by if you wonder what the rumbling noise is <laughs> when they do that to me I go well I'm so glad because you know in, in the days when I still had a dog. I said, well, I discussed it with my dog and he agrees with me. They get really pissed off with me on that one. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to know what your friends think. I want to know what you think. And just because, oh, and I like the one that gets even better than that. My friend, the lawyer, or my friend, the doctor, or my friend, you know, some professional designation, he agrees with me. In other words, intelligent people <laughs> and I'm going really <laughs> so if two things on this triangulation thing the first thing is um, understand that the person you're talking to probably doesn't have the courage to deal with it themselves so part of me goes you know feel sorry for them for that 
and I've been that person, so I have to I take accountability there. But the second thing is that the only way that it continues if you continue to let it. So if you put a boundary down that goes, no, you need to call them and find out, uh, it'll actually stop happening to you from that person until the next person comes along, in which case you do the same thing again. Got it? <laughs> and eventually you'll get everybody sorted out. It's the same way as people will come to me and they will say, Sal, what... What do you think about da 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 da? And I said, Are you sure you want to ask me that question? <laughs> because, um, you know, if you ask me a straight question, I will give you a straight answer. I'll actually tell you what I think, and you may not like that answer. <laughs> and so, one of the things I always say to people is, you know, don't ask questions that you don't want the answers to. <laughs> But we're so conditioned, you know, to be socially polite that we actually are making the other person tell lies. Have you thought about that? And, and maybe you know, some of you can comment on that one, which is what is the difference between being socially polite and lying? Think about that one. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get through the border and I'll speak to you on the other side. Bye-bye for now.